What's going on, Seekings fans? Jota here, your coach of the Seattle Seekings for Season 3 of the National Pokemon Association. We are now going into our Week 2 Team Builder, where we're taking on Crestle Key, coach of the Adelaide Umbreon. So as you can see here on the board here, uh, we've got a list of what her team is, or at least what it was as per the draft. Uh, you may notice, obviously, Drapion is gone, because Drapion was dropped and I picked it up. Uh, Meganium was traded for Lapras and Gengar was dropped and then subsequently picked up. So by, uh, per league rules, the Gengar is not allowed to show up this week, uh, but it is there. So she does have Gengar on her team. She just can't bring it this week because she picked it back up. So, uh, I'm not sure if we charged her a... I'm not sure if she was ended up being charged a transaction for it, but uh, all I know is that she uh, she basically told me it's... I'm, I know it's ineligible. I'm not bringing it this week. So uh, we're prepping for 10 Pokemon uh, this week. Uh, so that is a little bit of a handicap in our favor. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look and, t and see what I don't think is coming and why I don't think it's coming. So I'm going to get out of the way here real quick. Hope you don't mind so we can get a good uh, up close view of what is not coming. So as you can see here, we, uh, I'm leading off with my prediction that she's not going to bring Audino. She brought it. Uh, she claims she's brought it. Um, we actually got <laughs> It's funny. As I'm saying this, we actually got in a little bit of a, of a discord like like friendly smack talk kind of thing because you know Cress and I we talk a lot um about like other our you know our battles and such so when we were getting ready for this one we we're like uh oh I don't hope you do this oh I help you know like we're just we're just we're just totally playing with each other and she's like I'm bringing Audino every week which leads me to believe she's lying to me and she's not bringing her Audino if she's bringing her Audino that'd be great but you know what it doesn't really do anything and I have plenty of answers for it so that's totally fine I get it it has Encore I'm running a lot of, uh, I'm not running a whole lot of trickery in terms of, okay, no, that's not true. I'm running a lot of heat this week, but I am running a lot of, uh, more direct attack heat and, like, coverage heat rather than, you know, things that can be taken advantage of with Encore, for instance. Uh, she can wish protect all she wants. Uh, I'm gonna be dealing over 50% per hit, so we'll see how that goes over. And then knockoff, I just, I don't care, to be honest. I really don't care what a 4% knockoff does let me fix that real quick a little border on the side is bothering me anyway uh up next is hoopa uh i did do a couple of practice matches and hoopa showed up like with my front office and i said you know build some teams and take me on so uh hoopa only showed up in one match and honestly it got taken down easily by Breloom of all things so Breloom was actually able to handle it quite well uh just because it comes in and got spored i think in this instance but the fact remains is that it doesn't have a lot of answers to uh, quite a few of the Pokemon on my team, so it'll be really easy to take advantage of it. Uh, I've got Pursuit on uh, my Metagross if he want, if it wants to, uh, you know, try and switch out if I come in, uh, sort of thing. And we're running Assault Vest, so if it does want to stay in an attack, it's not going to get the kill. And if it does want to go out, it's going to die anyway. So uh, that is why Hoopa U is not going to show up. Lapras, honestly, I, it's sure Freeze Dry is a little intimidating, not going to lie for Rotom, but Rotom outspeeds, Rotom gets Volt Switch. Uh, Breloom, uh, you know, Breloom has options to handle it, multiple options to handle it, Metagross has options to handle it. Um, we've, we've, we've just got a lot of things that can wear this thing down very, very quickly, and it doesn't have any, any like, reliable recovery that we have to worry about other than maybe Rest, which, uh, the set I have here is just Choice Specs, but it doesn't matter. Uh, also, Gollum. This is one of the ones where, like, she can bring it if she wants, but I don't really care if she does. Uh, I know it gets Magnet Pole. I know Metagross uh, could be trapped, if you will, with Magnet Pole. Unless she's running Scarf Golem, there is no situation where Golem wins a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with Metagross. So she's more than welcome to try, but her Earthquake is not Stab. I don't fear any Rock move, and I don't fear any Electric move that this thing can bring out. So we'll be able to handle it that way. We've got, uh, you know, a couple of options that we'll be able to use, which I'll go over in, uh, in more detail. Uh, as we get there. But these are the six that I do think she's going to bring. Uh, being Celesteela, Azumarill, Flygon for that uh, Dragon Fairy Steel Core, as well as Cradley and Salazzle to top out the Firewater Grass Core, and then also Hitmonchan just to make sure I can't get my rocks up. Which is interesting because Hitmonchan showed up in all three of the practice matches, um, yet none of my ACs ever got rid of my rocks once they were on the field. Uh, so that is worth noting. Uh, even if they do go away, the Pokemon that has rocks will be able to go ahead and set them back up, no problem, on, on several uh, options here. So, it's not the end of the world, plus, you know, there's a chance she might not have brought it, because uh, predicting for Mega Sableye, I'm actually not bringing Mega Sableye this week, so that is, uh, that'll be interesting as well. 
Anyway, so Celestila, pretty straightforward. It can run a Leech Seed stall set if it wants to, or it can run more of a, a specially offensive flamethrower, flash cannon kind of thing. It doesn't get too many options. I think it gets Energy Ball off the top of my head, but I'm running Calm Rotom, so hopefully we'll be able to take a hit from it just fine uh, and bounce back with a Volt. Uh, I've also got Pain Split if needed, uh, but I think we should be able to handle it with uh, just the basics. It also gets wrecked by a couple of other Pokemon, including Typhlosion, among others uh, that I have. So I don't see this thing putting in nearly as much work. It's a Pokemon I absolutely despise and hate and wish was not a thing, but I don't think it's going to be a problem for us today. Uh, then moving on down, we have Azumarill, uh, Aqua Jet, Play Rough, Ice Punch, and Knock Off is what I have here. The thing about this thing that actually scares me is the set I didn't put here, which is the Z Belly Drum. Or, uh, not Z Belly Drum, just plain old Belly Drum. And the reason it scares me is because if she runs Adrenaline or Belly Drum, I physically can't switch in with Landorus. Not that I really would anyway, but I can't try to switch in with Landorus and get the Intimidate. Um, or I have to be careful if, uh, you know, about sending in you know, Landorus in a situation where, it, you know, it can come in and get intimidated, sort of. I basically, I don't want to intimidate this thing, because uh, if it gets plus one speed and has, you know, a belly drum up, uh, it could probably sweep my whole entire team. So that is scary. Honestly, if I was Cress, I would be uh, trying to do that. Although, now that I say that, it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense, because Zimmerl's water type, I probably wouldn't switch in Landorus on it anyway. Uh, but that would be the, the end of my life if that thing had an adrenaline orb. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Flygon moving on down, Outrage, Earthquake, Stone Edge, U-Turn, Choice Scarf. Uh, she was making a joke earlier that um, uh, get ready for Choice Scarf, Flygon, which leads me to think she's not going to run Choice Scarf, Flygon. She's actually going to run the Dragon Dance set. Uh, but I've just got both ready and prepared. I have a certain little present for her, so if she reveals Dragon Dance, uh, I'll be able to take advantage of that as well. So that is that is an option. So. Uh, choice Scarf flag on potentially, but you know what? If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So anyway, moving on down, we've got Cradley. Now Cradley, I do have to be a little careful about because it is Storm Drain. Couple it with Flygon, and no matter what, she always has a switch in to Rotom one way or the other, or at least a 50-50. I can easily go for Volt to get out of the way for Cradley if Flygon's out of the way, or if um, if Cradley's out of the way, I can go for Hydro Pump uh, freely. But I gotta take one of them out before I can do that. Uh, I also have to worry about it going for Stealth Rocks and spamming, you know, Recover and or Protect. Uh, the benefit that I have is Trick, Choice Scarf, Rotom Wash this week, uh, which means if it tries to come in on us, it'll get Choice Scarf, so it can go for Stealth Rock all at once, uh, and that's all it will be able to do, if that. Or it can go for Stone Edge, just that. Or it can go for Recover and just that. It'll effectively cripple the Cradley, and this happened two out of three battles where the Cradley came in on the uh, Choice Scarf trick. Uh, ideally, I would want to get it on the Celesteela if possible, but you know what? It's not the end of the world if I can't. Uh, it doesn't really do me any good to get it on the Salazzle. Hitmonchan, I probably wouldn't want it taking that. Uh, and then, of course, the Flygon, it's probably already got one, and Azumarill would be a pain if it got that, so I need to watch out for that. But Cradley and Celesteela are both prime targets for that. Uh, should I get it. Anyway, moving on down, we've got Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan runs Assault Vest generally and can uh, is known for Ice Punch, Earthquake, Mach Punch, Rapid Spin. Also gets Bullet Punch as well as Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, and Drain Punch are other threats that I need to worry about on it. Obviously, it's just going to be a type coverage uh, sponge, if you will, or like a, just, a, just a collection of all the different uh, type coverage moves that it can run on me. I don't know if we'll see the rapid spin. Maybe she was predicting me to have a really, you know, to bring Mega Sableye. Maybe she leaves it off. Maybe she leaves that hit my channel altogether. I don't know. Uh, but if not, I definitely expect to see it running some kind of priority to take advantage of when I'm low, um, which is another reason why I really don't want to let her get rocks on the field because uh, it'll just make it a lot easier to get me down low and be able to follow up with a mock punch. Uh, or bullet, so I gotta watch out for that. Moving on down, finally we have Salazzle, Sludge Wave, Flamethrower, Hidden Power, Ice, and Toxic are what I am predicting it to bring. Basically, I don't want to run Landorus in on it right away, because I'm not running Scarf this week, and HP Ice is a problem. Uh, so definitely want to watch out for that, don't want to just leave it there uh, to take the hit. We are running a bit of a calm, like a Spadef build on, on Lando, so we can at least tank one hit, I think. I would have to check the calc. Uh, but definitely something we want to watch out for. Actually, if I uh, look down here, uh, Landorus, I'm not sure. Oh, it says HP Dragon. Well, it's not correct. Well, we can just do the math. If HP Dragon does 18%, then HP Ice is going to do that times 4, so it'll go up to 80%. So we do live a hit. In case you guys are wondering what we're doing over here, why there's a Skarmory and a, and a Typhlosion here, I just put, you know, the closest thing to Salazzle's 
uh, and Celesteela's builds and just threw on the relevant moves and, and abilities uh, as needed. So that is kind of what we're doing there, and the Sleeper Cop will be able to work for the most part for that. So anyway, that is the Team of Six. Now let's go over the Team of Six that I'm bringing. I know you kind of just saw it, but you know it doesn't really matter that I spoil it because I'm about to go over it anyway. So. Uh, starting off, we've got Typhlosion. I decided to name him Corona, by the way, moving forward, so we're going to go with Corona the Typhlosion. Uh, Burn Up, Hidden Power Ice, Focus Blast, and Extra Sensory. Basically, with him, we're running the E-Belt and Flash Fire. We can come in on Salazzle if we're not predicting it to go for Sludge Wave. Uh, and in return, we can stack uh, heavy coverage moves on whoever we want. All of these moves are able to handle uh, various Pokemon on my opponent's team. Other than Burn Up, which is really just to kind of make it safe, uh, a strong stab fire move, I think it's 130 power, uh, if I remember correctly, and that just means that it can go drop its fire type, and then I don't really have to fear any type coverage whatsoever uh, from my opponent after I get the burn up in. So then I can focus on going for Hidden Power Ice, or a Focus Blast, no pun intended, uh, or an Extra Sensory. Extra Sensory, I think, clean Oko's Salazzle. Uh, I would have to check one more time the calc, but I'm pretty sure that's how it comes out. Anyway, one up the Berloom. We're running a little bit of a different set this week. We're not running our... our Technician set from last week, we are instead running a Toxic Orb Poison Heal set, Rockin' Spore, Facade, Sleep, Seed Bomb, and Brick Break. The reason of Brick Break originally was because Meganium, which I then, before recording this, but after we built this, um, I do have to worry, I would have to worry about it having a light clay screen setup option, because that's kind of all Meganium was good for, but now that I look at it, Brick Break does just fine. I'm not going to run Mach Punch really on it anyway if I'm not running Technician this week. And with Poison Heal, I can switch in, get my Toxic Orb. If for any reason I, I'm, my opponent brings Trick on anything, I'm not even sure if it gets Trick on anything, but I don't have to worry if I lose this item because that means something catches a Poison. Uh, and I still am able to go for, for Spore and follow up with a Facade right after I've been Spored. So we'll be getting a lot of damage in that way. And then we also have Seed Bomb and Brick, Ra Brick Break to be two powerful stabs uh, and not have to worry about chancing uh, Bullet Seed hitting the correct number of Seed, of, uh, seed damage. So. Anyway, moving on down, we've got Tyke or Taichi or Tyke. No, it is, it, I think it is pronounced Tyke. Taiki. I think it's Taiki. We'll go with Taiki. Uh, Taiki the Tokus. Taiki is the uh, Greek goddess for luck. So, as you can tell here, we are running Fly, Flyinium Z as well as Super Luck. And let me explain here how this works. So, that we have three options that we can use Flyinium Z on Roost, Air Slash, and Tailwind, as well as Flamethrower for coverage on Celesteela. We're running a modest. Uh, HP and spe special attack, if I can words, special, no, uh, but we have those two stats buffed and we'll be able to come in, if need be we can go for a roost if we're, if we're taking a bunch of status uh, drops for some reason, uh, we can get our, our stats back up with uh, Z roost if need be, I don't really suspect myself running it, but it is an option anyway. Uh, if we need to go for damage, we have Air Slash here, but we can go for um, we can go for a Z Air Slash, which I think is 140 power special flying, which is not bad at all. I was going to go Air Cutter, but I found out you actually can't have Air Cutter and Super Luck on the same Pokemon. It's actually banned, uh, probably just because of the generations they came out. And then Tailwind. Now, Z Tailwind is very interesting. So, Super Luck, in, instead of Swing Grace, Super Luck increases the crit hit ratio by one stage. Uh, so, basically, it means that uh, you basically have a free focus energy uh, you know, or I think, I'm not sure it works that way, I'm not sure how much, uh, focus energy buffs it, but you do have, you know, a higher crit chance. Uh, throw in the fact that Z Tailwind not only doubles the speed for four turns, but the Z move for, for Tailwind ups your crit chance, so it basically is combining Tailwind and focus energy together, couple that with higher luck already in super luck, uh, and we're looking at pretty much guaranteed crits. Uh, from our air slashes and from our flamethrowers should we uh, be able to get a couple of them off and also be able to roost off. So uh, I'm not saying Togue is going to get a sweep, but uh, it's definitely going to be something that my opponent has to watch out for and can definitely be a momentum shifter if we get that tailwind up and if we start getting uh, some crits and some outspeed going. Unfortunately, I don't think the, the crit stacks for the other Pokemon, it's just a focus energy for the one that uses it. So only only Togekiss will be able to go for the crits, and only the turns that it's in there. If I switch it out, obviously it loses that. Moving on down, we've got Machine King the Metagross back yet again uh, to try a second time. Still running that Assault Vest with Clear Body, because you know what? That worked. That wasn't the problem. The problem was we didn't have our coverage to deal with certain threats on the opposing team. 
Now this time we're running Zen Headbutt as our solo stab. We are not running Bullet Punch, nor are we running Meteor Mash. We are running Pursuit as our quote unquote priority. Really, it's just in case Hoopa, you just, or, uh, Hoopa decides to show up and tries to switch out. We can just get that Pursuit off, or if it tries to Shadow Ball us and we live with the Assault Fest, we can fire back and the Pursuit will one hit. Almost guaranteed, I think. I'm almost positive it's 100%. I'd have to check the calc one more time. But even if it's not, you know, if rocks are on the field, it's going to be a, a one-hit kill after rocks regardless. So that is the thing. Hammer Arm covers uh, a couple things, but mainly Audino. Audino cannot stand up to a Hammer Arm to save its own life. Uh, and then it can also... It's also a good neutral play to run if we're not sure if Cell Steel is going to show up. Uh, but we need to get the damage off. Uh, I was originally going to run Hammer Arm Gyro Ball, but then I realized it kind of had four move syndrome here and figured I needed uh, Thunder Punch a little more to handle Celesteela as well as Azumarill if the time comes. We are relatively able to, we are able to wall and, and just, you know, completely outplay Azumarill fairly well with, with Metagross. The only thing I really worry about is the superpower and even still that's neutral and not stab, so I shouldn't really worry about it too much. Uh, but Thunder Punch will be our answer for a couple of threats on there. Uh, moving down, we've got Calrissian. Calrissian. I don't know why he's not nicknamed, but he is now. Uh, Calrissian, the Lander Therian. Oh, and I'm clicking buttons that I shouldn't be clicking. Calrissian, the Lander Therian, Rock and Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Smackdown, and U-Turn. This is actually a set straight from my assistant coach, Ender Films. So also, uh, shout outs, major, major shout outs to my assistant coaches, uh, Ender Films 13, Sky Dragon 48, and, and Pokey Girl Sarbear, I think is her new uh, alias now that she goes by. It used to be Sarbear with numbers on the end, but now she's Poke Girl Sarbear. Their links will all be down in the description. Go check them out. They are my front office and they are doing a great job of helping me prep week after week here. So anyway, this set is straight from Ender's uh, you know, brain, his idea was that in order to deal with Celesteela, you got to smack it down and hit it with an earthquake. Because if rocks are already on the field, when you go for smack down, it will knock it down and make it take damage from rocks as well. So you get the smackdown, it takes some damage from rocks, and you follow up with an earthquake. It has to switch out. If they go into Flygon, you smack down again, and do your earthquake again. If it goes back into Celesteel, you smack down. Like, you can keep smacking down as long as they want to keep switching out. It's not an issue. And since we're running leftovers this week, uh, switching on my opponent's part might not be the optimal play. And on top of that, we are running a plus spadef lowered special attack nature, uh, which I believe is careful. Uh, I totally just looked that up, but I did remember, I did know it at one point, I just forgot what it was here. Uh, but we're running, like, we're running relatively max attack, or rel max HP, excuse me, and then about two-thirds buffed spadef and one-third buffed attack. Uh, actually, more like three-fifths and two-fifths, but close enough. Uh, the idea is we don't want it to be too weak, but we do want it to be able to take an HP ice to the face and shrug it off and keep on moving. Uh, because in draft format, you're going to be seeing a lot of HP Ices on Landorus, and it's very important to not fall victim to that. And last but certainly not least, we have OxyClean, the Rotom Wash, and he's going to be rocking uh, Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, and Pain Split, but wait, there's more! He's also got Trick and a Choice Scarf. So what the idea behind this is that, and I did this in practice battles, was that we were able to Trick Choice Scarf onto the Cradilly and relatively shut it down. It wasn't able to do anything. Uh, the same would pretty much apply for Celesteela if we were able to get a Choice Scarf on it as well. Like I said before, we do want to avoid getting a Choice Scarf on... Uh, we do want to avoid having to switch it on Flygon and uh, Azumarill, unless the Flygon ends up being a Dragon Dance set or the Azumarill ends up being a Belly Drum set. Because if we switch the Scarf onto the setup move, we're golden. There's nothing my opponent will be able to do uh, to take us out with the setup mons, and there's nothing they'll be able to do to take us out with a stall set uh, in Celesteela or in uh, Cradily. So we've got answers to both of those with that Choice Scarf uh, trick set there. So anyway, as you can see by the Sweeper Calc, it honestly doesn't look that good on paper, which I know, like like I said before, some of these percents are a little off uh, for the Typhlosion, quote-unquote, aka Salazzle, uh, and the Skarmory, aka uh, Celesteela. I did try to fix them as best I could, so you can see your Skarmory's got... Uh, oh, actually, that's not set up correctly. So Skarmory needs to have uh, minus one defense, plus three special attack, and plus one special defense to get the accurate numbers for Celesteela, roughly, because that's about how it comes out. And then for uh, Typhlosion, if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, it was simply minus one minus one here. Oh yeah, those are already set. I don't know why the type the Skarmory ones weren't, but it was just minus one, minus one, minus one to get to about as frail as a uh, Salazzle is. And on top of that, we can tell that Earthquake is going to do times four, so it's really like 400%. 
Uh, you can tell that, you know, things like anything that does super effective against ground here is obviously just going to be doubled. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Or not ground, excuse me, ground. Uh, poison and fire, you know what I mean. Uh, so we do have that. And I, I'll just know to do the mental gymnastics of, of calcing in my head. Oh, wait, so this is what times effective? So I'll just know to multiply it in my head. So uh, not 200, but 400. And, you know, it's a bad example because it's an OCO. Regardless, like it can... It could, it could, you know, not charge up. It could trip and fall, and an earthquake comes in at, like, no damage, and it'll still somehow kill uh, Salazzle from full, because that's how frail it is, and that's how weak it is to ground. So, that said, on paper, this matchup doesn't look super good, to be honest. Like, as you can see here, there's a lot less green on the offensive side that you may see have seen in past Sweeper Calcs in Season 2, for instance. The benefit that we do have here is that almost every move that matters, as in like, for instance, Air Slash onto Flygon, or Air Slash on Hitmonchan. This is an Assault Vest build, but mind you. Uh, Zen Headbutt, uh, Thunder Punch, uh, all of these are between 50 and 100, so these are all going to be solid two-hit KO range. And on top of that, the benefit of our team here is that we've got a nice switch core that can handle a lot of the threats here all at once. I don't know if Typhlosion would run Scarf, given the fact that uh, we've we've got Togekiss to deal with Outrage, and we've got Landorus, Togekiss, and Rotom Wash to deal with Earthquake, so it's more likely going to have a Dragon Dance set, which we'll hopefully be able to take advantage of with a Choice Scarf uh, from Rotom. So that is the idea behind that. I know it can probably have Iron Head, but there's no guarantee it will. It might have some other things it needs to run. It might run... I think it's a Rocker? I think it gets Rocks? I'm not sure. Uh, might run some other shenanigans, and it might run into four move syndrome here. We shall see. Oh, and U-turn. It's probably going to have U-turn. Uh, the Celesteela here is, I, of course, it's a bit of a problem, but we do have one, two, three things that wall it relatively well. Make that four things that wall it relatively well uh, with its most common uh, attack set with uh, Flash Cannon and Flamethrower as its options. I know with Energy Ball, it can deal damage to, to Rotom, but otherwise, I don't think we really need to worry here. It, it, I do, I am very much liking this lander set in that it just completely shuts down the special threats and the things that are physical threats such as, as Azumarill here, we're going to do a ton of damage to it either way, whether it was a special or physical and on top of that we have the Intimidate to cancel that out. So we don't really need to worry about that and I think we'll be just fine with this. So leave a like down below if you are excited for Season 3 of the NPA Week 2 and you want to see the Seattle Sea Kings come out strong and get a first win on the board there. Uh, especially because this is a division matchup as you can see here. It is gold division. So we definitely want to make sure we grab that win uh, and are able to take full advantage of it. And so yeah, that's we'll hopefully be showing them how we do it downtown. So I will see you guys all in the next video. This is Jodor signing out. I'll see you guys all next time. Bye-bye.